Hello, welcome to Mile High Discussions. I am your host, Griffin Woolsey. With me today, I have three students. We're gonna introduce them in the moment, but for now, let's introduce the show. Mile High Discussions is a platform for students to voice their opinions. They're all unique, and so this is their chance to do that. We're gonna run through a lightning round, a lightning round called Out of Left Field, break into larger discussions, and then once we're past that, we are going to play some games, watch a video, and the winner of the show, whoever has the best overall show, uh, that can be attributed to a lot of things, so hang in there till the very end, gets two cents. That means 30 seconds of face time to stand here and just tell me what's on your mind with the current issue that you would, are aware of. Okay, so let's open it up. Hayden, let's start with you. Go ahead and introduce yourself, Hayden. Hello, my name is Hayden, and I am a 12th grader. I'm Alexis, and I'm an 8th grader. I'm Lily, and I'm a 12th grader. Awesome, awesome. Okay, Lily, let's start with you. You look, you look like you're into sports. If you could compete in, in the Olympics, which event would you choose? Swimming. Which, which, just swimming? swimming. What stroke? Oh my god. Time's I mean, up. Fat. Alexis, how do seasons affect you? Um, I guess what I wear, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Hayden, how do seasons affect you? Well, I'd say in the, well, uh, <clears throat> as most people will be outside in the summer and spring, I will be inside playing video games. But in the winter time, I'm out in wi uh, right, Winter Park, Copper, Keystone. Skiing. Awesome. So a little role re reversal there. Lily, what about you? How do seasons affect you? Mm -hmm. They make me not want to go outside. Because if it's cold if out. If it's cold, you don't I like the cold? I don't like the cold. Do you like the heat? Love the heat. I How wish good. it was 90 degrees all the time. Very nice. Mm -hmm. All right, Hayden, if you had to swap lives with any fictional character, who would it be and why? Oh dear. Quick God. why. Oh. Mario. I'm just throwing it out there. Who? Mario. Mario, okay. So you could have a girlfriend named Peach. <laughs> Alexis, if you could switch with any fictional character, who would it be? Um probably. Hmm. I don't know. There's so many to okay, choose from. Okay, we'll come back to you, Lily. Oh my God! Like she real. said, there's so many to choose from. I can't. Just knit. Uh, who would you be like? That would be cool to live like that for a day. Oh man, like a, maybe a character. Oh, I don't know. Um, maybe Jake from Adventure Time. Okay. That'd be cool okay. To live like Alexis, that. how about you? We're coming back. Finn from Adventure Time. <laughs> <laughs> Revise Two adventure answer. little buddies. All right, <laughs> next one. Um, how full is your glass, Hayden? Well, I don't want to be tipsy or anything, but full. Full glass for Hayden. How, how full is your glass, Alexis? Mm, half full. Half full, okay. Optimistic. Lily. Half full. Half full. Yeah. You say that kind of begrudgingly. I was just saying, because I'm, you know, it's, you know, school day, you know, half full. <laughs> I would be full if it was a weekday, a weekend, but it's a weekday, so. Okay, at least you're getting half full. I'm glad none of you did uh, half empty. That would be <laughs> a shame. We're not heartless. Gosh. Uh, okay, we're going we're gonna to go to this one. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood, Alexis? Wait. Do you need me to repeat the question? How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Um, five How pieces much of wood? wood? Five pieces of wood. Five pieces. Lily, this woodchuck is chucking. Depends on how big the woodchuck is. <laughs> Hayden? Chuck Norris. Leading it at that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So he all would. of the wood. He would. All of the I wood. That was awesome. That was out of left field. <laughs> we will be right back after commercial. Yeah. 
There's times when you wander and ponder all the labels you've received. Believe me, I've got a few. Never mind from when, why, or how. Because now, everything's different. i found the perfect place. A space where the labels fade, and I'm accepted and supported. Check what the news reported. Emily Griffith helps all who wish to learn. Turn towards your future while you finish the basics on your time. Prime opportunity in this mature environment? The only requirement is motivation and thirst for success. Invest in your passions. There's no limit to how far you'll go. And know that you'll have something in common with everyone here. We all chose empowerment over standing still in fear. Welcome back to Mile High Discussion. Just got out of left field and we're going to launch right into the discussion. I'm going to start with Alexis this time. Alexis, describe your perfect teacher. Uh, a teacher that doesn't give out a lot of homework, but it's Okay, clear. okay. More than that, though. Um, like, clear and understanding. Okay. okay. And... <laughs> Fashionable. Yeah. Yeah? You like a and fashionable fun. teacher? Fun teacher? Yeah. Would you like them to play games, perhaps? Yeah. Too much like, fun? Well, I guess like enough fun, but not a, like not a lot of fun, so we learn, but... Right. Yeah. Do you think that you learn by playing games? You can. Yeah. So that'd be fun. What about you, Lily? Mm. Who's your perfect teacher? What would the perfect mm. teacher to you be? <laughs> Um, a teacher that has, I guess, a good outline on what we're going to be doing for the whole year. Because I notice a lot of teachers have structural issues. So okay. I think, yeah. That would Elaborate be a little bit more about your frustrations, mm. Lily. Just give it to us. Ah, let's see. Like, maybe, um, I don't know. Like, maybe just given an outline of, like, what standards you have to meet throughout the year. So then you kind of know what you have to What's expected? Learn. Yeah, pretty you. much. Yeah. Okay. Isn't that called a grade system? Hayden, jump in here, man. Well, I mean, like a spreadsheet. Uh, say my perfect teacher would be um, well, a teacher that's very involved with their students. They, uh, <clears throat> he or she would know how to teach various different types of students, like those who are a bit slower than others, those who learn faster, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Also, going on like the whole games thing. Like well, just educational games, like putting half the cat, half the class against the other half, and trying to guess questions correctly. It was like a pre-quiz kind of thing. Yeah, kind of making making learning like fun. Interactive. And making it interactive. That's another thing that I heard from you. So, do you like a teacher that is the teacher that comes over and helps you over the shoulder with your homework, or the teacher that says, you know, meet me before or after class what you know what do you look for those certain qualities in a teacher as well that to appreciate yeah i think a teacher that kind of like finds you struggling is a good teacher that can yeah. like see, obviously see you struggling and not just kind of let you figure it out yeah or build help, you help. up and, yeah. and give you the tools you need anybody mm -hmm. else got a thought we got about or, uh, five seconds <clears throat> today or perhaps instead like a teacher that knows well, knows your potential and helps you helps you realize it. Like Excellent. someone that always help, helps you out. Excellent it, way to end that discussion. A teacher who knows you, your potential, and how you can achieve it. Next question, we're going to start on Hayden. Hayden, would you rather end world hunger or end world hostility? I'd say end world hunger because, well, <clears throat> Oh, kind of quoting fo the Fallout game that came out pretty recently. War, war never changes. I mean, humans have been fighting well, since antiquity. We fought over nearly every single reason there is in the book. End of world hunger would solve one of the world's biggest problems, except with world hostility, that's instinctual. It's going to be, I mean, well, that's, I don't know, that's humans 101. You're not changing that. Okay, Lily, jump in here on this. I feel like a lot of people are hostile because they're really hungry. I know that when I don't eat, I get very crazy. So <laughs> I think that maybe ending world hunger would probably make people a little bit more, mm, I guess, happy and less hostile. Yeah, Alexis, I don't know. It's very good, though. <laughs> good, good opinions. I would end world hunger. Okay. Just because there's a lot of people that don't eat, I guess, like every day. Right. Hayden, and you wanted to end 
World hunger. World hunger. So I think that we're across the board. It was interesting when I wrote this question, you know, I was, you know, I thought hostility would be the one coming out of it, you know. Um, the world, you know, the world is a scary place sometimes, but world hung ending hunger would change so much, you know, just helping these people view, you know. You want to elaborate how, you know, where would you want to focus? If you were to start this, if you wanted to start this excursion, so now you've made the check, you've gone the route of we're going to end world hunger, how then, are you, how then do you plan to do it? If every country in the world came together and said, this is our main objective, you have all the resources, all the funding, how do you then end world hunger? I'd, in my opinion, I think we'd start with uh, well, the highly populated countries first. I mean, not really China. Well, they've got populate, the population boom there has been exponential. But as far as like in recent news, I haven't heard of serious food shortages over there. Perhaps water shortages, but not food shortages. But with like places like India, where it's just crowded beyond capacity, or places in the Middle East, places like that where just so many people are impoverished, start, starting there would certainly be likely the best decision. Okay, Alexis, where would you? Where would we? Where would we start? Where would you go? Um, I don't know. I guess probably go to like what he said like India and stuff like that that don't really like that are overpopulated and stuff that don't have the resources to get food. So none of you have an, uh, an American bias. It's oh. not let's let's save the people here first it's mm. let's go to the most populated. Lily what do you have to think about this? I mean in my opinion I would start with Haiti because Haiti's um, just in horrible condition right now. If you watch their documentaries, they're, they eat mud cakes, so they have literally nothing. Um, but, I mean, um, I don't think America is, is the problem, because, I mean, in my opinion, if you starve in America, you're kind of an idiot. Because, for one, we have so many government resources, like food stamps you can get if you're homeless or if you're a single mom. Um, I mean, there's so many, like, resources you right. have here, whereas in other countries they have nothing. Right. So. We have a system in place yeah. to help people, to help people who are in like need that. and or shelters yeah. and things like that. You bring up a very good point. Some places don't have anything. And, I mean, Little Caesars dumps good, perfectly right. good pizza in their dumpsters every night. So if you're homeless, then God, right. say Little Caesars, my friend. You seem wise, Lily, so we're just yeah. going to keep on you for this next one. How Thanks. old would you be if you did not know how old you were? <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, um, I mean, my little, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess. How old do you feel? How old do I feel? Yeah. I feel like 14, 15. 14 or 15? I do not feel 19. Okay. <laughs> Alexis, how, how old, old would you be if age wasn't a number? If you, if somebody, if nobody knew what age was and it was kind of like, how old are you? And you're like, I think I'm like, I don't know, 40? <laughs> <laughs> Take into um, things account, your personality, your habits, your hobbies. How old are you? I think uh, probably like 14 or 15. Okay. Hayden? Well, considering it's a common mistake that a lot of people have made with me over the years, I'd assume 20. Okay. How old do you think I would be? 30. It, you nailed it. I'd be 30, I think. That's awesome. Lily nailed that. Yeah, like she a teacher. Right through me. I look like it. a teacher. I'll Just work on that. present yourself. I will well. work on that. We've got a little bit longer. So, so do you think that that age is going to change as you grow, or are you always going to feel like a 15-year-old, Lily? Yeah. I mean, I always, I mean, I've always had this feeling where I've always had been with my inner child so I I will always love to be a child my whole life because I love my inner child so. what about you Hayden are you gonna be a 20 year old the rest of your life <laughs> well as we know <clears throat> even as people are go going well, going through their older years like 40s or 50s you kind of got to let loose every once in a while <laughs> you sure do speaking of letting loose Alexis are you gonna be 14 years old the rest of your life? Well, I don't think so, because, like, 
you would like age with your like really really quickly down the line what's the coolest age if you could be any age right now what age would you be lily uh 25 okay alexis <laughs> five. <coughs> five. five awesome awesome job <laughs> hayden really quick how old would you be um 21 21 uh, for Hayden. 20. That's awesome. Five years old. I would totally go back to kindergarten. That would be, that'd be fun. You're just yeah, hanging out. Okay, here we go. If given the chance, Alexis, we're going to start with you. If given the chance, would you leave Earth to cultivate a new planet? Basically well. provide the new civilization for, say, Mars in the near future. Well... I think it would be really cool to, but I would miss my family and friends and stuff, but probably, yeah, if I had somebody to go up there with me. So if you had no family or friends, you would, you would consider it? Yeah. Okay. Lily? I mean, Donald Trump is running for president, so yeah, I would probably leave Earth as soon as possible. <laughs> okay. Hayden, let's keep off the Trump track here. <laughs> We're giving him publicity. <laughs> Hayden, so true. would you go? Um, probably the, I mean, I'd probably just stay with the moon, not Mars. Right, right. I think that stuff scares me. It scares the crap out of me just as far as like, you know, would you get launched into space on this rocket ship and be on this ship for five years and then you might make it. And if you do make it, you got a couple months of food supplies. That just sounds scary to me. <laughs> Does that... Would you be down with that, really, Lily? Yeah, I mean, there's already been discoveries of finding water on Mars, so yeah, I mean, I would, because you could probably create your own source of resources out there, I guess. Like but it's food. this harsh winds and tornadoes There's everywhere. harsh winds and tornadoes on constantly, Earth. Constantly. Like, there constantly. was a horrible, horrible hurricane that just happened in Mexico. I'm sure that does not happen in Sometimes Mars. Sometimes with these kids, talking to them won't change your mind. <laughs> and that's perfectly fine. We want you to have your opinion. Alexis, are you, you're not scared by any of that? I am terrified by okay, that. Okay, <laughs> thank you for being the one. Thank you for being the one to admit it. Thank you. Hayden. Well, uh, you seem like a big tough guy that would just get out there and get the shovel and start work immediately. <laughs> well, that, well, that and uh, well, <clears throat> how I chose um, well, be, still being fairly young on the previous question. You can think of a well, say this barren wasteland. Like, what could I mess with around here? <laughs> yeah, what angle could I throw this huge rock? Seriously. Since it's on the moon, it's much you lighter. You show up, there aren't going to be sports teams to root for or cable to it's watch okay. or internet. I don't watch it's sports. It's going to be get in your volcanic proof sleeping bag and hope to God you wake up in the morning. Sorry. <laughs> if there's volcanic I'm scared. Proof sleeping bags, I'd love those. Voice? Are those at REI? I, I want one of those. Okay. We're going we're gonna to move on. Uh, you did a great job. Great job in the discussion. I thought you, you all uh, voiced your opinions really well. We're going to jump into what we like to call 8-Minute Madness. This is where we're going to be playing games. And first off, we're going to be discussing, um, we're going to be playing uh, in the news. So if I could have one of you, Lily, come on over around here, watch your cord. Oh, Just okay. come behind the table to stand beside me on the media board. Sounds boring. So what's going to happen with this is we are going to... I'm going to give you a news story. Okay. Here is your news microphone. <laughs> oh, go, man. Go <laughs> ahead and stand right there. All right. And Lily, you'll, go ahead and read to, to them what your news story is. School time for baby pandas at first day of kindergarten. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to pretend like she's in the field right now reporting <laughs> this, this news story. So ask her any questions that you would want to ask this reporter who's live here on the scene. I'm ready. <laughs> um. <laughs> Where are their parents? 
their parents right now are being held in a sanctuary down in Florida. Why? Why did they get taken away from their parents? Because they need to learn how to adapt on their own, Griffin. Silly old kid. <laughs> uh, also, what in the Florida? You said it was in a sanctuary in Florida. As far as mm -hmm. I know, uh, <clears throat> China has ownership rights on all pandas that all, all Ooh, pandas. So, in all countries yeah. that are taken out of China, are pretty much leased out of China. So, mm. since you said this was a sanctuary in Florida. Does that mean that America has started kidnapping pandas? Uh, Did we no. just blow the box see, off of a kidnapped no. panda story? <laughs> well, if you would let me talk now, Okay, Griffin. let's oh. let the reporter Thank report. You. These pandas were actually born in America. They came here long, long ago from China. Not, not too sure what year. I'll get back to you on that. But point. they came here and they actually had children in a zoo. And now they're being put in a sanctuary so their children can be taken care of separately. They are legal pandas. Legal pandas. Way to go, Lily. We don't play it like you that right. here. Lily, really go ahead this still way. Yes. Body. Alexis, come on down. Your time, your time to shine. And like I said, Lily Hayden, please participate with the news story. Drop this. So if you just want to go through here, watch the chords. Here's your mic. Thank you. Go ahead and report on this story. Cops 3.5 miles per hour chase. Okay. So you can see what's going on there. What did Grandma do? Was she going too slow? I believe Grandma was going too fast. Was for this a speed. chase on foot or in the car? I have to know. Mm, a chase on car. It's on the. Looks like she's on her little. What are those? Um, no pants. I think. I mean, were the cops on? Little foot rascals. Or was... That's what they're called. Little rascals. Oh. Aiden, jump in here. What do you got? Is is her little rascal broken oh. down on the side of the road? I think she's pulled over. Well, <clears throat> just use your creativity. And just... <laughs> Grandma is pulled over on the side of the road for going too fast. Okay. How fast was she going? Really fast. <laughs> How fast was really fast? I, I just wonder if... Just looking at this picture, how bored was must the cop have been? Okay, that woman is... Okay, that old lady is driving down the road Hardly, hardly even in hidden five. Do I want to waste my time? Just, I need, okay, I know I'm behind. I'm giving up tickets. Just, that screwed up a little. All right. The end Thank of you, the Alexis. Aiden, <laughs> step on down. We're gonna exactly. do one really quickly, man. Here we go, really quick. Here you go, man. All right. So go ahead and report your story. Dad films the Las Vegas holiday of a lifetime. Hold life up your microphone, we can't hear you. Dad films Las Vegas holiday of lifetime on GoPro, but realized it's too late that the camera was on selfie mode. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> oh, no. Did it capture, what did it capture him doing? Anything funny or fun? Just his expressions, his selfies. Did he pick up, a, did he go get a sandwich? Look at this. Utter confusion. Doesn't know what the, what, in the, what on earth is going on. He doesn't look like he knows what's going on in any of these pictures. Everyone else look interested. All right. Well, questions? that's what's in the news, people. These are real news stories this is that we real pulled. News story? Thank you, Hayden. <laughs> Take a seat. We're gonna launch into this. So did you hear? Did you hear about this? Did you hear about this? There was a missile. I, mean, I heard about Paris, but there not was a Paris. missile. For goodness gracious. Oh, this is what everyone thought was a UFO. There was a missile going on. They were doing missile testing in California. But the people didn't know. The citizens of California had no idea that they were going to be doing this. So literally millions and millions of people oh were gosh. scared to death. I love the inclusion of Why the would you not language. tell these Does people? Does anybody know what UFO stands for? <laughs> um, unidentified flying object. Okay, good. So technically, this is a UFO. It yeah, is a real UFO. Since they didn't know what it was. Right. 
So you all saw that. We'll just pause that there and keep that image up. Let's, let's talk about this. So do you feel comfortable with the government being like, oh, don't worry, it was just, it was just us blowing up missiles in the sky? No. How do you yeah, feel about feel this? Cool. I feel like you should probably inform people when you're going to be flying stuff like that above their house. Do you think it might scare have, people? Do you think it might have been an accident, Alexis? Do you think they didn't think people would be able to see it, and then they um, messed up and were like, "Oh, sorry, that's just us." <laughs> um, I don't think it was an accident. Like, I don't know. Maybe they wanted to scare people. Maybe, yeah. That's Ooh, that's another cool. thing out there in the universe <laughs> is that they kind of wanted this to happen. <clears throat> Um, they wanted this to happen. Hayden, what do you think about it? Would you be, I would legitimately be scared. I would be scared that. too. There's another cover up. Right, right. <laughs> so not UFOs, or not aliens. We're, we've decided on that? No, oh, well, it's not aliens. Uh oh. What if it was it aliens? It could be aliens. And then the government said it was a missile test. What about that? Have you, have you thought of it from that perspective? I don't think everyone's seen this as well, he's given that some thought. I mean, there any weird video like this pops up on the internet, people think, okay, was it actually real, or is someone just trying to pull a prank? Right. But this, I mean, that didn't look like any kind of missile that I've ever seen. That's I mean, what yeah. I'm saying. It doesn't, it looks like a very strange Because, I mean, missile. wouldn't people have already know? I mean, wouldn't people uh, already know what they look like, I guess, from right. past missiles? We're going to wrap it up. You all did a great job. Hayden. Since you didn't get it last show, Hayden, come on up here, stand right here, give the world, look into that camera right there, and give the world your two cents. Go. Oh, I got yeah. like, two things about me, Peter. Just say anything that's on your mind. So, yeah, well, pray for Paris. Let's hope Trump doesn't get elected. I'm sticking with the Trump thing. That's Sorry. fine. That's your say whatever, man. Still uh, got a little bit more time. Well, I can't exactly end this like Rodney Dangerfield, but I don't know. I think I'm good. He gets no respect. All right. <laughs> Take a seat. Thank you. You all did an excellent job on the show. Uh, thank you for watching. We really appreciate it. Uh, we are going to be shooting this every other Monday on Denver Public School TV Network. And live stream, we'll also begin putting it up on our YouTube channel. If you'd like to be a guest, please reach out to us um, at the station. We will field your calls. And thank you for watching. Lily, Alexis, Hayden, you did a great job today. Thank you. As of you. Thank you for being guests, and thank you for uh, voicing what was on your mind. Thank you. So we're just going to kind of talk about this. How was your experience on the show? Did you like it? Be honest. Mm -hmm. It was pretty yes. enjoyable. It was different. It was different? Yeah. Different doesn't have to be bad. No. It was the first time I've ever been on a web show. Okay. Yeah, me too. This is a TV show. Mm. Not my first you time. Were, you were enthralled. You were ecstatic. As you can see, our guests, they're ecstatic just to be here. It's fun. They love the show. We love it too. So thank you for coming around. Ah, I'm just going to... This is going to be the longest goodbye ever, I think. Goodbye! <laughs>